a bit about yourself and uh, your background. Uh, I grew up in India. I started out as a financial economist, uh, really? then converted, did my PhD at NYU. I taught at Harvard for several years and then moved to California and did another degree in theoretical computer science. So now I work in fintech. Okay, and then uh, <laughs> why the change? Uh, I was interested, I was actually working in option pricing in finance, so it was continuous time, differential equations, oh, things sure. like that. And then I was building a bunch of algorithms to price options on very large lattices. Yeah. I needed to prove that they had, the, the code ran really well, I couldn't prove why. So I started learning theoretical computer science to do that. I realized I need to go back to school, so I ended up going back to Berkeley to do another grad degree in, in computer science, and then stayed on Silicon Valley and, and Here we are. working in, yeah, in AI and machine learning now. So, okay. yeah, yeah. And you yeah. can you present a, a yeah. paper today as well? Yes. What's the paper about? Uh, so the paper's an unusual paper because it's actually the use of machine learning to actually understand how companies translate their human capital operations into shareholder value. Okay. which is an unusual thing because yeah. it hasn't really been done before. Uh, there's clearly an understanding that uh, human capital is very, very important and growing in importance for Excellent. company value. Uh, it used to be about uh, intangibles of about 30% of company value in the 70s and the 80s. Now it's almost 90%. Of that 90% of intangible value, uh, roughly people guess 50% is the management of human capital. Uh, the difficulty in measuring that was there was no real source of truth for measuring it. And about two and a half years ago, the SEC and the regulators in the U.S. require now reporting in the annual reports of companies to do this. And so what used to be sort of an ad hoc judgment-based approach now has a whole bunch of textual data available. And so we built an entire system at Amazon where I work in the AI team mm -hmm. to actually put together um, an analysis by extracting the right text from the annual reports that relate yeah. to human capital and then relating those across all companies that file uh, the annual reports in the US, which is about 8,000 companies, uh, to different metrics of business value like revenue per employee, return on equity, things of that sort. So, okay, yeah. and then yeah. what are some of your results? Uh, so we basically find that uh, there's a strong uh, sort of relationship, that is the text that is reported on human capital uh, can discriminate companies that have low revenue per employee versus high revenue per employee, companies that have low EBITDA versus high EBITDA, and these models are cross-sectional. The uh, social science models that are based on top of machine learning uh, features, yeah. but, uh, but Typically in this literature, the, the R-square fit of these models was about 10 to 15%. With machine learning, you can get that up to 30, 40%. So this is a clear improvement uh, in the econometric power uh, in using text and tabular data. So we basically have a, a framework for human capital, which is broken into four pillars, uh, talent, leadership, organization, and human resource processes. This yeah. is based on Dave Ulrich's uh, framework. He's, he's a very well-known professor at Michigan who built this out, so this work is joint with him. And the idea here really is that uh, we can take these four food groups of human capability and apportion how much activity each company is doing in each bucket, and then even advise companies saying, you know, you don't seem to be putting enough into the talent bucket or the leadership bucket uh, based on the natural language processing of the annual reports so that they can then work on things that are deficient in and realize also from uh, which sources that they're active, actively investing in uh, are driving their shareholder value. So wow. that's the basic idea of the paper. Okay. Yeah. It's not bad at all. Yeah. So what are yeah. some of the complications you had during this research? So one of the problems is the regulators uh, told people to report, so companies are now reporting, but there is no standardization. Uh -huh. So they are putting it anywhere in the annual report, just making sure they report, and companies themselves did not at this point realize how much of a driver human capital is. Now that we show it, companies will be now incentivized to report more so that mechanisms like ours that evaluate these, these annual reports will actually be able to be influenced by companies. So we're gonna have this feedback loop where there's a regulation, hopefully. yeah, hopefully. Uh, there'll be a lot of gaming as well. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, anything can happen. So it's kind of an interesting situation right now. But I think there are two parts to this. One is that companies will report mm -hmm. 
and hopefully our work will help them report better so that this data can actually reflect truly what they're doing with their human capital and translate into value. And second, because we can now compare across companies, companies can benchmark against other companies and slowly improve the standards of human capital management across all industries. And maybe you know, down the road, we'll find better usage and, and uh, better shareholder value from this. So that's the and idea. How long do you think that will take? Uh, hard, to, hard to say, but uh, we, we already put out the results in this paper for all of 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it turns out that Dave Ulrich, uh, who, who's sort of the brainchild behind the human capital research in the US, uh, he's formed a company to actually take this live. So, uh, so we've handed off the code and everything so that he can actually do that. And he's processed all of 2022, and now 2023 is happening. Okay. So, so hopefully this will become a, a sort of one of the systems that are, are in place for helping companies report and understand the value they're generating and what's driving their value in the human capital process. But the second thing is that we are now seeing standards for this. So there's a new ISO uh, 3414 that, uh, that's come out that actually has sort of tried to make standardization of this reporting process a little more real than currently uh, exists. So hopefully with that, I mean, just to put a guess on it, maybe five, 10 years down the road, we'll have something that's more systematic, but it'll be sitting on top of AI and machine learning. Right now, generative AI has come along, so I think the nature of this product will change because now, instead of uh, a human actually taking the results of the machine learning analysis and presenting them to management, uh, the AI can probably write out the analysis as well. So, so we'll see some pretty rapid evolution because generative AI has been moving much faster than we yeah, expected absolutely. anyway. So, it's yeah. A yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, well, good luck with your presentation later on. Absolutely. How's yeah. the conference so far? It's been great. In fact, this is a very different conference than the ones I normally go to. I usually go to finance conferences okay. or I go to sort of computer science, hardcore computer science conferences. Uh, I've never been to a real systems conference like this before. Uh, and so the range of, of disciplines that people have come from, from robotics to you know, medicine, are, are just much more diverse than usually experienced because conferences otherwise are all about image processing, all about natural language. And so this is delightful in many ways. And uh, I think there's a lot of energy in the room. Uh, you're responsible for a lot of that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And I think the papers have been well chosen. So, so, I, so it's, I'm learning a lot actually in, in fields I had nothing uh, really, my iota of knowledge, you know, so to speak. So, okay, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Is there anything you're looking yeah. forward to, to for today or tomorrow? Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to the healthcare one because I don't actually work in healthcare, and I'm sort of curious about that uh, quite a bit. And you can do some cross learning. Yeah, some cross learning. I I am a economist, and economics is a great discipline because you literally can look at anything. Yeah, and absolutely. and my training in computer science is kind of helpful. Uh, the other thing I'm looking forward to is also a lot of the talks on robotics, which I hadn't, I've also not spent a lot of time on. So for me, that's a, a place to learn as well. And then, of course, I, I work in the AI team at Amazon. So, you know, anything new that we can kind of, you know, build into something real, real would, be, would be nice as well. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for everything. Take care.